Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be discussing about AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service. So when we say serverless, it's a bit of a misnomer because it sounds like we don't use any server, but whereas the real cases we do use server a bit. So serverless does not mean we don't use server. It actually means that we don't have to think in terms of servers, which means that we don't have to think about sizing, that is whether to use a large server or a small server, or we don't have to think about capacity planning, which means whether I need one server or 10 servers or 100 servers, neither I have to worry about how to make my application highly available and scalable. So all this is taken care by AWS. Let us say I build an application whose purpose is to convert the format of the audio or the video file. So if I upload a video in AVI format, it converts it into MP4. Or if I upload an image in JPEG, it converts it into PNG, sort of like that. Now, I deploy this application in an EC2 instance, and then I expose the web services through REST, or I create a SDK out of it. Now, once I deploy this application in EC2, let's imagine at night, say from 11 p.m. to the morning 7 a.m. nobody uses my application so if I use EC2 to, EC2 to deploy my application irrespective of whether the users use my application or not I do have to pay for the infrastructure right but that's not the case in Lambda in Lambda I don't have to pay for the idle time I only have to pay for the number of invocations that happens so that's why we say pay only for the compute time you consume. I don't have to pay for the idle time. If my application is pretty new and people are not aware, so initially it will take time for people to get know about my application and use it. So at that time, I don't have to pay much. Whereas in EC2, I have to pay right from the day one. The moment my EC2 instance is up, my payment bill starts. But in case of Lambda, even if my application is deployed and it has not been invoked for like initial one month or two months, I do not have to pay anything because nobody is invoking my request. And Lambda is a polyglot, which means that when I write a code and upload that function in AWS Lambda, I can use different programming languages. Like AWS Lambda supports like four to five languages like Java, Golang, um, Ruby, .NET. Python so I can choose any of these programming languages uh, based on my skill set so here we have mentioned some of the benefits of lambda like there is no server to manage so as a developer I just have to think about my source code and the business logic I don't have to think about the hardware like if I'm talking about an application which converts a video obviously that is a very memory intensive application so I have to think in terms of hardware. If, it, if I have to deploy in EC2, I need to think whether to deploy in large instance or a micro instance or a nano instance, right? But it, when it comes to Lambda, I have to be focused only on my code and not think about the hardware or in the machine size, which it's uh, gonna be provisioned. And scale with usage as and when the demand increases, it gets automatically scaled. I don't have to think about um, having an auto scaling group and then attaching my instances into the auto scaling group everything has been taken care of under the hood and pay as you charge as I said even in lambda the pricing depends upon the number of executions and also the number of minutes my code is running so lambda basically charges for every hundred milliseconds and also the number of times my function has been triggered right and we spoke about highly available and fault tolerant so all this has been taken care of by AWS so how do lambda works so it is very simple I just have to write a code with my uh, language of my choice either it could be a Java SDK or a Python or a Node.js or a Golang and then I have to upload this code into AWS lambda and once I upload I have to set up some kind of a trigger so Either I have to expose it through HTTP endpoints. In that case, I have to uh, set up my AWS Lambda with API Gateway, or if it's gonna be uh, triggered based on event, then I have to set up um, based on some uh, event, like for example, if 
any new file is added in my S3 bucket then trigger this lambda or if some value is changed in RDS then trigger my lambda so I have to set the trigger point and then your lambda will be running whenever the code has been triggered and based on the compute resources you need and we just spoke about the pricing model we just pay as you go there are three ways in which we can trigger a lambda function either it can be a scheduler say for example I have a application which will uh, do some sort of an application every day at morning 5 a.m. or I have to run my function once in a month or once in a week so I can set up a kind of a scheduler using CloudWatch we will see how to do it in our lab section or it could be an event driven so when an event occurs uh, when any messages is sent to the queue or when any new file is added to the S3 bucket or any file is deleted from the S3 bucket say for example whenever a new file is added to the S3 bucket I need to send an email notification so I will write the email notification logic in my lambda function and set up a event trigger like whenever a new file is added at that time I have to trigger this lambda right the third way is to expose this function as a HTTP REST API where I will uh, set up an API gateway and expose my lambda function via API gateway in our lab section we'll discuss all these three ways to trigger a lambda in much more detail when you trigger a lambda function you can either call it in a synchronous or an asynchronous way so in synchronous when you invoke a lambda function synchronously the lambda will run the function and wait for a response and finally when the execution ends lambda returns the response along with some metadata information like uh, the version and the status code stuff like that so basically there's a wait period so if your lambda function takes uh, five minutes to complete the entire execution the client has to wait for the time period of five minutes to get a response back whereas when you choose to execute your lambda function asynchronously it is like fire and forget so you place some event in an event queue and then the lambda picks the event from the queue and uh, processes the request and then it sends the response back in a different queue or if the lambda function fails the failure messages will be sent in a different queue so it's like kind of a fire and forget so you don't have to wait until the lambda function uh, completes the processing and then you get a response back so when you choose whether to use an EC2 instance or a lambda so we will keep that comparison in a separate video because that is a that brings a bigger discussion there but these are the certain limitations of lambda function that you need to keep in mind like for example the memory allocation the memory allocated for your lambda function will be a minimum of 128 MB and it could scale up to a maximum of 3 GB not beyond that so this is a one limitation which has been set by AWS and also another interesting limitation is the execution time so the execution time of a lambda function will be a maximum of 15 minutes not beyond that if your execution exceeds 15 minutes it will be terminated so uh, lambda doesn't clearly suits for a execution which, which will take a longer period of time or which is a very time consuming a uh, process which will take beyond 15 minutes so it basically it is not made for such kind of a processing so if your application uh, processing time would be more than 15 minutes or if you think that you know the memory allocation will be beyond 3 MB sorry 3 GB then deploying your application in EC2 is the best uh, solution for you a lambda is suited for application which is not that memory intensive and which doesn't take a longer period to complete the execution process certainly not beyond 15 minutes and there are a couple of other limitations like the file descriptors size is set to 1024 and the environment variables cannot be more than 4 KB and another interesting thing is that the concurrent executions so when we say about concurrent execution first time when you invoke your function AWS creates an instance ec2 instance for that particular function so when the function returns a response the instance remains active throughout the time and if you invoke a function again while the first event is still being processed then 
the AWS will initialize another instance for you. So this function can process two events concurrently and as more event comes in, new new instances will be created. So at the max, how many concurrent executions will Lambda support? So that depends from region to region. So overall it can support from 500 concurrent requests till 3000. Some regions like uh, US uh, and in certain regions in Europe it can go beyond 3000 and certain regions in Asia they have set the limit only up to 500 concurrent sessions. So one thing you have to keep in mind is your function concurrency is the number of instances that serve your request at any given point of time. And the function continue to scale until the concurrency limit for that region is being reached. For example, if your region concurrency limit is 500, it could serve only up to 500 concurrent request. Again, it depends upon the region. So before you uh, set up a Lambda function, make sure in which region you have to uh, set up your Lambda because the concurrency execution varies from region to region. And also, as we said, the memory allocation is can go only beyond 3 GB so as and when the memory allocation increases you, the pricing also increases. So these are some of the limitations and benefits when it comes to lambda functions. So as someone rightly said time is money in, in terms of serverless programming. So when you have to deploy your application think wisely whether you have to deploy in an EC2 instance or you can just save a lot of money by deploying that in AWS Lambda. So guys, thank you so much for watching my video. In next video, we will see a lab session of Lambda in much more detail. Until then, thank you so much for having patience and subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for more such interesting videos.